Okay, Android people, let's get started. So we started with assignment number one on Monday, and we're going to finish assignment number one today. Um, and it's a little bit more, uh, I shouldn't say more complex, but it's, it's, it's a little bit outside of the hello world standard, hello world environment. Uh, but just to refresh your memory, if you weren't here, we created a standard Android project, and hopefully you have Eclipse installed, and you have a working environment, because uh, you're going to need that in order to do the assignments. And um, so we created an Android project, called it, I called it Project 1. We created the Hello World activity, and the Hello World activity is what you're looking at right now. And um, I added some stuff to it that I'm going to explain in a few minutes. Uh, but what we did essentially on Monday was look at the main uh, layout that comes, you know, automatically with a brand new project that we created. So we, I gave you a tour of the um, directory structure. We went into the resource, the RES directory, and we looked at the layouts. And the layout had uh, main on there, and I double clicking on main right now. And main is just nothing more than an XML <coughs> sheet. And the XML sheet has, uh, if I click on the graphical layout, there we go, <laughs> nothing more than an application title bar and a text string that shows up here. And uh, we navigated this, we clicked on the layout graphical view, and then we clicked out on main XML so we could see the XML version of it. And the XML version of it had a couple components on it that we looked at. Uh, text view was one of them. I also kind of reviewed and looked at the layouts and the layouts that come in multiple different forms. The one that comes by default is called the linear layout, if you remember that. And uh, the assignment basically had us use a linear layout. And we actually got this for us automatically when we created the project. And then uh, we created another XML file called it name getter and I think that's kind of like where I stopped I believe we dragged and dropped a few things onto the canvas what do we put on there well we put on there a title a label so we could put something in there that says you know type your name we put a little input box on there too and then a little button that says submit on it if you double click on these items it takes you to the code where you can change change you know what appears on the item itself like here's the button talked about strings and in this particular case I've got this little warning message that shows up and it's because I've hard-coded the word submit instead of using a string resource um, and I told you that well that's really bad I also hard-coded here the hint as well instead of using a string resource and uh, the reason why I want to use a string resources is because it makes it easier for localization and we'll see that in the next couple weeks here uh, where you know if we want to change the language we want to change the verbiage and it's the title of the program. We don't have to go through the entire program looking for all the uses of it. You know, every time we've used that same verbiage, instead we just change it in one spot, changes it for everything. Um, and it makes it a little bit more um, efficient in terms of updating and stuff. And plus, if we switch over the language, well, we just switch over the string file and we get a new, new set of words for every different translation you could possibly think of. And uh, I've got a little PowerPoint on that I'll give you later to give you the kind of the fundamentals of that. But um, and that's why we use the strings. So I'm going to leave it alone because this is this will actually run just fine without the strings. But if you're curious about the strings, they're also in the resource and it's under the word values. So if you click on value values subdirectory, open up the strings.xml file. We see I've only got two strings here. One says uh, app name. The other one says hello. And... Uh, if I switch over and I click on the other tab, I can actually click on here and I can edit it in a more user-friendly manner if I wanted to. So I can change this and say, you know, hello from ITU or something if I wanted to. And I can change my app name to, I don't know, Project One or something. And uh, so I, I highly encourage you to actually start playing around with the strings, create some strings. How do you use the strings? Well, you go over to the XML layout here. I'll just go to, hmm, actually, I'll just go to main real quick here. And uh, I'm not using any strings. Hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm using, actually, you can use strings in the manifest as well. So if I go and look at the manifest, I see here I have the syntax for the string. And the syntax for the string, if I zoom in on it so you can actually see it, 
uses this, this kind of reminds me of uh, Objective C actually, <laughs> it uses this kind of syntax where I've got the at symbol string, meaning it's a string, and then I got a forward slash app name, and app name here, and uh, here's also used here on the label for the activity, is coming from app name that's in my string file, which is app name right here. So I can kind of sort of see the relationship. Once you learn the syntax, you put the strings in here and you use the at string and then the slash and then the name of the string that you've created anywhere you want in the manifest, in the XML files. You can put them in menus. You can actually use that in the program too, in the source code. It's universal. It's a variable. Think of it that way. It can be used anywhere. And you only have to change it in one spot. So it's worth your while to venture out and kind of experiment with the strings. So. All right, so how far did we get? We didn't get that far, actually. We created the Android project, we took a tour. I talked a little bit about all those different components. Drawable, if you remember, it already has an icon in there for you. A lot of people get creative, you know, on their first app, and they want to put an icon in there. Actually, I'll, I'll show you how to put an icon in here, because a lot of people are you know, like, well, how do you put an icon in there? Well, you have to have an icon. If you have an icon, and I've got an icon out here somewhere. If I go to uh, my home directory, I should have the ITU. Here it is. ITU PNG file. Huh? Size limit? If I go, uh, actually, that's a good question. It will down. It will actually scale itself. This one is 100 by 100. If I look at, take a look at it. I think 320 by 320 or 300 by 300. Don't quote me on that, but I think th around the 300 ish is as big as you want to go. Because what ends up happening is it gets scrunched down. You can't see the details. Um, at one point, I think I did this for an iPhone app. Actually, I lowered the resolution because I needed it to look better or something. Um, the lower the resolution, the more clear it actually looks. But let's say, for example, I want this in here. What I can do is take and just add it in here. So if I've got IC Launcher, if I double click on IC Launcher, this is going to be that little Android character that's going to show up as my app icon for my program. And uh, if I want, I can just drag and drop. So I can take this over here, click on it, just drag it over here, and drop it. And this just says, do you want me to copy or do you want me to link it? I'm going to copy it in, actually, instead of linking it. Because what happens if the other one moves? So it's not going to take up that much space. It's just going to take it and copy it from one location, put it into the other location. Where is the other location? If I go out to my workspace directory, I'll see it in drawables because I'll see this entire directory structure. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. So copy. Now I have an icon out here, which is the name of the file. And there's the ITU logo that shows up. And if I actually, if I, what was this called? This is called AP assignment number one. If I go out to my workspaces directory, which is off of my home directory, I should see uh, AP assignment number one right here. If I double click on it, it opens it up. If I go into the resource directory, which is where all my resources are being stored, which is the same title, actually, out in Eclipse, and double click on it, I can see in this first drawable directory, well, there's that icon. So if you don't want to drag and drop it through Eclipse, you can actually copy it in from the directory perspective as well. And let's say, for example, I don't want to use iclauncher.png, and I want to use this one. Well, then I change it in the manifest. So let's go ahead and change it in the manifest, actually. Uh, so if I go back to the manifest here, and the manifest, as I mentioned last time, this is kind of review as well, that uh, it sets the parameters, the permissions, um, everything that's going to be associated with the current running project. So it's kind of like the properties of the project, if you think of it that way. So the project topic, or excuse me, the project title, the icon that's going to be used for the project, which is your finished program, essentially. All controlled by the manifest, as well as permissions in different parts of the project. And we're going to see it intents, actually, today. Um, I talked about intents last time, if you were here. And then we'll see how that kind of works together. So instead, here, where it says application, and this is in an XML format. Don't worry about it if you don't know anything about XML. This is all you really need to know. There's an opening and a closing tag. <laughs> and all this stuff goes in between. And it's just like HTML, except for HTML is used for text markup. XML is used for data markup. And we define data inside of it. So we have an opening application and a closing application tag. Inside, I've got Android colon icon. And it's in drawable, which is the directory here, just like string 
inside the string. So instead of using IC launcher over here, and we don't have to put the extension on there either. I could just go icon, call it icon. And then that's going to essentially use that icon file because I called it over here, it's called icon. So you don't have to do this for the first assignment, but uh, you know, if you want to play around with it, it's not a bad idea. Get familiar with it. And uh, we can see here that we have an activity started. And uh, it's probably not a bad idea to explain this stuff to you at this point as well. The default activity, when I first created this, actually said hello world activity, which because it was the only file that uh, was included when I created the default project. Here, I've actually fixed this up for you so I don't have to type, you know, so make it a little, make, makes, makes it go a little faster as well for you. Um, I put the name get name. Well, the get name is actually this file up here, get name, and it's an object. So I don't have to put in get name .java or get name .class. Instead, the name of the object is get name. It's the same thing with Java, actually. When you type in Java space, the name of the program that you're running, you don't ever put the .class in there. You always put in the name of the program. So it's the same kind of logic that works. So when this program starts, the first activity that's going to run is whatever activity I put in here. So I switched it, and I put in get name. I'm going to go over this in a few minutes. I left the string alone for the label for the title bar, and I put the label as a app. This is the default app name that shows up from the string, as we saw before. And then we have this thing called an intent filter, and the intent filter is our way of communicating between different screens or different XML files. Um, the iPhone folks, they call it a storyboard, where we have one screen that comes up and it leads to another screen to another screen. It's kind of, sort of like a design concept, the storyboard, that goes from the process of, or the flow of the application from one component to another. In Android, we call it an intent. And this is sort of what I went over. Actually, I did go over this on Monday. So a continuation of that concept is, in this first program, we're using an intent. And in order to use an intent, we have to specify which activity we're going to run. So in this particular program, we have two activities running. We have get name, which is going to turn into a get name object, which is right here. And you can see it extends activity. So now we just learned from the object oriented programming in Java course that this is inheritance. So get name is an activity, and so is hello world. That's also an activity, it extends activity. And uh, what we got, what we have going on with get name is we also have an implements on an on click listener that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, uh, because this is our first GUI experience for event driven behavior. And uh, in order to get any event driven behavior, we actually have to install or use some listeners. And um, it's kind of an automated process. It doesn't really take much more than extending a class, or implementing something. But anyway, long story short, the concept I'm trying to explain to you is intense. So we have two activities, and this application that we're going to write here is going from one activity, and it's bringing up the next activity. And each activity, as we've got sort of seen here, is associated with a different layout. So we have a main XML layout, and we have a name getter layout. And so get name is name getter, hello world activity is main XML. But we don't actually have to say that because we're not really running the layouts. We're running the classes. We're running the objects of those classes. And in order for us to run multiple objects in the same program, we have to tell the manifest that we intend this one to run. So we list the object. So going back to the manifest real quick here. This is all that we're doing. So we actually have two activities. We have, and we see it from the XML code. And I can actually make this a little bit better by putting it all on one line. But maybe you could actually kind of just see it the way it is. This is an opening and a closing activity tag. This is an opening and a closing activity tag. I didn't reset, you know, all the names and the icons and everything. You could. All the stuff here can be put into here as well. Instead, I just said the name is hello world dot activity. The name up here is get name. So what we're doing is essentially saying that we have two activities. We're making them both known to the manifest so that they both can run. 
what's going to end up happening, and I can probably show this to you if you need, if you want to see it. Just take this line out, and then one of them's not going to work. <laughs> Which one will work? Well, get name will work, but hello world activity is not going to work. It's not going to come up. And you probably won't see this until you see the big picture of the program running to actually know what I'm talking about. So let me go in and show you the rest of the program so you can sort of see the big picture, hopefully. <clears throat> so we uh, went through the steps. We took a tour. This is what we did on Monday. We took a tour of the um, different components of the app, the drawable, the layout, the values. Talked about the generation of these automatic files, the r.java, you know, no, don't edit those files. Um, the assets, we haven't looked at assets, we're going to look at those further in the course. If we have any files, HTML files, text files, anything that we want to add to the project, we put in the assets folder. And the assets are only visible to the currently running app. They're not visible to everything else. The manifest we looked at, and uh, project properties, which is just nothing more than a byproduct of the project settings, so you don't really edit that either. But you can look at the file. It kind of gives you a quick snapshot. So we actually built it, and I bl believe we ran the Hello World in the emulator when we get, got to the point where it would be running. If you just create a standard project, it'll run automatically for you. If you create a standard project, and it won't run in an emulator, and you have the emulator corrected, uh, correctly um, created, there's something wrong with your installation. You should be able to, in fact, I can just kind of do this right now for you. You should be able, and I'm going to close this up so you can at least have a way of testing your implementation. Uh, no, I'm not going to save this file. No. 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 If I close a or just shut this project down. If I just create a brand new project, a new uh, Android project, or I use the menu here to go project, Android project, and I give it a name, I'm going to call it a test project. Next. And I give it an API level. And this is the trick make sure you give it an API level of an emulator that you have created, an AVD that you have created. Depending upon what you have installed, you'll get different things that show up in this window. I go next. Give it a package. I talked about packages already on Monday. Any package name works. Finish. I should be able to run this program as is, and it should work just fine without me doing anything to it, which is the reason why I'm sort of doing this right now. So if I right mouse click on it, go down to run, I want to select Android application down in the bottom. And uh, if I do that, I have this set up to work with VirtualBox, so I, I get to select which emulator I want to run it with. You're probably going to end up with this down here, or maybe not at all. Maybe if you only have one AVD, if you used AVD Manager and you've only created one emulator, you can select one of your built-in emulators that you've created. If you don't have an emulator correct, uh, correctly created, you're not going to get anything. You're going to get an emulator error. But if I do this and I select something that I have running, and I happen to have this one running right now, the program should run. So let's find the emulator here. Here it is. So let me zoom out a little bit. I think your computer is overheating. If your emulator is running, it could cause your computer to fan to come on if you have an emulator running. It takes up a lot of resources. That's why I use VirtualBox, actually, because those emulators are heavy duty. This is the results of the built-in project. If you don't get this, there's something wrong with your installation. If there's something wrong with your installation, don't try programming at this point. Go back and fix the install. <laughs> so your default project should look like this. The name of the project shows up in the title bar and you get this text string. This is what we did last time, actually. But we didn't actually have to do anything. Oops. OK, there we go. Get this out of here. All right, so let me go back to the uh, project that we were building. I'd shut your emulator down, unless you want your computer to overheat. <laughs> but then again, the fan's coming on. It's a good sign. It means it's actually cooling down, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so that was the first part of the uh, Hello World activity, running it on the emulator. You should come up with something like that. 
If not, follow through the instructions to create an AVD, um, an Android Virtual Device. Part two, these simple activity classes. And this is more of an explanation about the different types of classes and the different types of extension. So hello world activity came from the first default type of class that we can create, which is an activity. Activity is tied to the XML page. It shows a screen. It's your basic, basic, you know, general kind of project type that you're going to create. Is most of it's going to be an activity. We have services, broadcast receivers, content providers that we'll move on to as soon as we get past activities. But for the most part, we're going to create another activity and we're going to switch between the two different activities to see how intents work in this first project. So the second class that we're creating, just press down on your power button and it should kill it. If you want to kill it, just hold it down. You might have to hold it down for a few minutes. Oh, there you go. Take the noise away. But you probably want to leave your fan on because your computer's still hot. So just reboot it. Just reboot it. Yeah, because you want your fan to come on because your hardware is really hot. It'll cool it down because the fan will come on. Right now you have no fan on. You have a closed box with a lot of heat inside of it. <laughs> okay. So we've created the class. <laughs> we go. We're creating another activity. This, this activity is going to get a name from the user. It's going to take the name, pass it to the first activity, and then the first activity is going to put it on the screen. It sounds trivial, but this is the core concept of intents. And you'll be doing this in practically every application that you write. So it's not a bad idea to get familiar with it. So to get the user's name, you're going to be creating an activity class. We did this on Monday. We got this far. And um, we uh, created uh, we created the XML file as well. So we create the user interface by, and we did this on Monday actually, so we have it here already. If I go back up to the correct class. We went down here to layout, and we selected new, and we went down to uh, XML, Android XML file. We called it uh, name getter. Put on the name getter file. Of the little prompt, it says type your name. And uh, the little text box where someone's going to type their name in there. And then a submit button. I didn't add to it, but I added to it uh, when uh, after you guys left. I put the hint in there. There's a hint. Here's the hint here. Enter your name. The hint, actually, if you put the, the mouse over the... Uh, input field and it'll show up a little kind of like this does it'll show up a little dialogue that says you know hey enter your name whatever you, whatever you put in as a hint uh, so that part was uh, was part of the name getter.xml interface it was inside of a linear layout as we saw before which was our root element so we have root elements and then inside of the element we have sub elements so everything was inside of the you can see it in here this is what I'm talking about we have the linear layout out here this is the, the root, and then inside we have a text view, we have an edit view, we have a button. Those are all of the elements that appear on the graphical layout. So it's just two different versions. If we double click on the element, we go to the code, XML code for the element. So we, the purpose of the first assignment is to sort of get familiar with that concept. Um, okay, so if I go back to the instructions, we created the name getter XML file. And then the next part was to create the class file that's going to go along with it. So we make modifications to it. We set the attributes, the width, the height, using form widgets. We put a text button on there. And lo and behold, we get down here. We edit the button elements, yada, yada. OK, now we're going to create the new activity class. So we go in and we created using the file new class up here. And we actually did this part as well on uh, Monday. So we new class, and we created the get name class. And in the get name class is where I stopped, actually. And uh, rather than having to type it in front of you, I put the code in here already, but let me talk about what I put in here. So you know what, what we added to this, or you're going to be adding in a few minutes on your program. So I created a new class, extended. we extended um, activity. And here's another little thing, kind of thing to note. I put in Android view, view, on click activity here. If I go like this and take this out, I'm going to get a little dialog box that comes up when I hover my mouse over, and it's going to tell me to import on click listener from view view. What it does is it sticks it up here for me. 
So now I see uh, view, view, on click listener up here. You may do that, or you may put it here. It's address res it's resolution. It's like location for the package. So more common to see the import up here. Import the package, and then you just call the method. I mean, call excuse me, call the subclass from the package, which is what this is doing. So sometimes you'll see code examples that say type in Android. No, it's the same thing as whether or not you put it here or you put it up here. Um, you're just not required to have to put it up here. If you're only going to use it once, a lot of people do that. It doesn't really save you any energy, any time, or anything to, to do it that way. Okay, uh, we created a demo. Let me just go through the code so you know what I'm doing here. We created two variables, and these are this is the same stuff that we looked at actually in the object oriented programming in Java class. This is a class, it has data members and member functions, just like any other ordinary class, except for it doesn't have a constructor. The constructor is the on create, if we look at the life cycle of the object as it's created, it doesn't have the same life cycle as a regular Java program does. But instead I've got up here two data ver two data members, one's called name and the other one's called button. You're probably wondering, well what do we need a button for? Well that's a GUI item. If we want to have apples and apples and treat it together, we take the GUI item and we're going to implode it, which means extract all the stuff out of the GUI and assign it to a button and then manipulate it through the button because it's a variable. <coughs> And we do that in a couple of different steps, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, we have this method here. This method is inherited, comes out of the implementation of OnClickListener. The problem with Android development when you first start it is it assumes you know about inheritance, it assumes you know about interfaces, it assumes all of this background knowledge of object orientation, which you probably don't have yet. So we learned today, actually, that this means inheritance. <laughs> so. Every new get name that we create extends activity. Activity is the super class. You remember that part. And so every get name is an activity. Well, so is every every hello world activity is also an activity. It's both extending activity. This one is going to implement something. Implement is different than extends. Extends is for inheritance. Implement is for interfaces. And you're like, well, what in the world is an interface? Interesting question. Just like inheritance, except nothing's implemented in the interface. An interface is, an is sort of similar to an abstract class. It contains methods, but there's no method implementation. <laughs> if there was a method implementation, we could inherit. We could actually extend it instead of implementing it. But instead, this class, and this is another, again, another class called an onclick listener class. It's another object. We're implementing it because it doesn't exist. It's abstract. Anything that's abstract in the language has a template for it. We have a bunch of methods and we have this functionality that's supposed to work, but we don't have anything implemented. So what ends up happening is if I take this out of here, if I take this method, this onclick out of here, let me just comment it out because I'm going to put it back. I'm going to say get name. If I put my mouse over get name, it's going to say add unimplemented methods <laughs> because we've implemented this. If we took this out, it's going to be just fine actually, except for we got this on click listener that I'm going to run down here, which is going to have a problem because I don't have this method. So let me put this back. So now if I go, well, I'm going to get this, I'm going to say, well, okay, so this is going to tell me unimplemented methods. Why do I have unimplemented methods? Because I'm implementing on click listener and that includes default methods. There's only one method it actually includes. It's really this on click. So if I go like this and I go add unimplemented method, it's going to put it probably on the bottom. And on the bottom I've got, lo and behold, on click view w, which is really this one up here but I've changed it to arguments instead of w, the name of the view. And I'll talk about the view in a second. So let me get rid of this. And uh, we don't know about overwriting and overloading yet. <laughs> but when we implement from interfaces, we always override because there's nothing to overload. So to override something is to overwrite it. So that's why I always say the word overwrite instead of override. I'm actually saying it wrong, but I'm saying it because I, that's the way I learned it. To overwrite means to get rid of what's there and write something new. 
caught, you know, erase what's there. To overload means to complement it, add to it. So in Android, we can actually override and overload if we want to. If we're implementing an unimplemented method in an interface, we're going to override it. We're going to over, it's going to be overridden. And if it's overridden, what we're doing is we're actually just providing the functionality. And what's the functionality? Well, this is a method. It's called onClick. And it's a method that we actually have to associate with some sort of activity that the user is going to do. So when the user clicks on something, this method, this onClick, is going to happen. So what we have to do is implement the onClick listener. The onClick listener is going to be attached to a GUI item. And then when the GUI item is clicked on, the listener is going to pay, hey, the user clicked on that item. And then it's going to invoke the onClick method, which is what, what basically you have to implement. So if you implement onClick listener and you don't implement onClick, you don't have the full functionality, you only have half of it, which is why you get that little warning message. Plus, anytime you implement anything, you actually have to include the methods. So onClick listener only has one method, it's onClick. We register it by registering the listener, and here's the listener button right here, actually. This is the line of code. Forget about all the rest of the stuff right now. This is the line of code that's registering the onClick listener with the button. And what's this button? Well, the button is this guy right here. And the button here is actually coming from the imploded find view by ID from the r.id resource. So what is that? So if we go out here, remember I told you I was telling you on Monday, I said everything that's in this XML file gets compiled for you, gets pre-compiled, and it's actually in r.java. And r.java is out here in one of these don't touch auto-generated folders. Here it is right here. If I click on r.java, it's going to have a big warning on the top. It says, don't touch me. <laughs> because out here we've got button number one. We've got, and these are all those items. In fact, even the name of the layouts out here, all the strings are in here. It's all pre-compiled into a Java compatible format. Actually, it's in r.java, which is a class. And we just pull it out, and it's a, it turns into a data member of the class, and it has attributes and things associated with it. Don't ever touch this file, but you have to, it, it, they call it imploding. I think it's more like exploding. <laughs> to explode the file, or implode the file, I don't know. To extract, think of it if, you, if the extraction works better for you. I'm going into R, which is the object R. Remember I said R.java you know, R turns into R.class, but we don't call R. we just call it R. It's the same way as we call get name. So R is the object. ID is the method inside of the object. It says, give me the ID that's associated with each one of those GUI elements that you have in the XML file. Button number one is one of those items. So all I have to do is remember what I called my XML elements. I called my button number one, button number one. So if I go out here, actually, and if I change button number one, which one is this? This is in uh, mm, button number one. Well, we don't, actually, we're taking it from name getter layout, which I haven't explained to you yet either. Um, let me just look at button number one. It's the name getter. Uh, Button number one is right here, button number one. First, I change it to my button as an example. My button. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna auto-generate for me, actually, make this a little smaller. I have to save it. Once I save it, it's supposed to auto-generate for me. If it doesn't auto-generate for me, I run clean. I go project clean, which is up here, which is, it's going to auto-generate. It actually probably already did because it gave me that little squiggly line. And I go, okay, I cleaned it. Now it's wrong. Well, it's not called button number one anymore. Now it's called my button. So I'm going to change it. Did it capitalize B? No. Okay, good. So now we're good again, theoretically, except for now I have this error message here. <laughs> button one cannot be resolved, or okay, because it hasn't, it hasn't actually, uh, hasn't updated yet. <laughs> so here's the problem you're going to have when you do this, is it's going to take forever to update. It'll eventually update. Let's just save it. No, no, oh, there we now. Now, okay, after I saved it, it updated it. Okay, see, see what happened there? It gets frustrating. So you're gonna, it's gonna happen to you. You're gonna be sitting here going, but that's what I called it. It's still red. It's still red. It's because in the background, 
that file is being compiled and it's being reset, it's being cleaned up, and everything's being changed. It's not an instant because there's a compilation process that's going on in the background. All right, so now you can kind of see the relationships, I hope, between the resource R dot, you know, ID. So R dot ID is what you're going to be using 99.9% .9 of the time. You could also, you know, be pulling stuff out of drawable, which, you know, if it's an icon, if it's a picture. But mostly it's going to be IDs. What are IDs? ID is actually the XML code that's out here that says ID. That's going to be, here it is, ID. That's where the ID is coming from. So anything out here... Uh, we don't see drawable, but you can actually have a drawable um, uh, tag. These are tags in the width tag. Everything's actually in that R.java file. Okay, so back to here. <laughs> so what have I done here, and how does this work? It happened actually up here in this line of code. So as I mentioned before, we don't have a constructor for, for Android. Um, instead, we have this life cycle, and I showed you the life cycle on Monday. If you missed Monday's lecture, go ahead and look at the life cycle. It's kind of important to know. Life starts with the onCreate, which is sort of like the constructor. Constructor onCreate says, okay, let's let's create something. So we're going to call super.onCreate. So those of you who are just in here for the Java class, this is what we're doing. We're calling the constructor onCreate, and then a name for the constructor for Java, I mean for Android. And we're going to put the saved instance state if we, we can actually get away without doing this, but you want to do this because every time your app runs, you want it to go back to where it was before. So if the app is idle and the app comes back up, you want the state of whatever happened with the app to be saved. So it kind of gives you a more realistic kind of, you know, swap between apps. Otherwise, if every time this thing was created, it started brand new fresh again, you'd have no uh, imaginary kind of feeling of the thing running in the background <laughs> or the thing actually existing. So this is de facto standard. Every program you write is going to have this in here. It's just a way of just safeguarding that the app just loads in the same state it left off in last time you ran it. Or maybe state. Excuse me? It saves the state. Click on stop or yeah. Resume. Yep. It's actually, you can call saved instance state from on resume. You can call this the super on create from on resume or from an on pause or from on any of the other lifecycle states. This can be called actually to, to create to recreate if the application needs to be reloaded. But when the application, this only loads once, just like the constructor, every time the application starts. This is calling the supers, supers on create. If you leave that out, your program is probably going to run. You're going to get some funky, you're going to get some funky Result. results. It's going to like look brand new every time you load it up. It's not going to save any information. It's not going to look, anyway. So what is getting the interface, which is kind of interesting, we have another built-in method called set context view, which is part of, believe it or not, activity. So activity's got a context, and the context is the screen. It's the view of what is being shown to the user when the application starts, because there's this disconnect between the classes and the view. So we set the class when it loads to set the context view to the HT, excuse me, to the XML screen or to the interface that we want the user to see. Um, and this is way TMI for anyone who's like done this before because it's like, well, you know, you don't really need to know all these incre 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 yeah, these details, <laughs> however, can't talk today. It does uh, provide some explanation if you've ever wondered. So r.layout, just like r.id, out here in the r.resource, r stands for resource, in the resource directory we have layouts. We can do the same thing with strings. We can do the same thing with IDs we saw down here. It means the same thing. Here we're saying name getter. Name getter. So when this class starts, the on create is going to load up name getter as the interface. That is how we connect XML files to class files. That's the, the hidden missing key that some people actually get confused with. Not generated by default, no. The only thing that you get by default is this onCreate method. Inside it says auto-generate code. You might possibly get this line here, some of the newer APIs. In fact, we can create it. Actually, we created a project. Hold on one second. I can tell you what's created by default. By default, we did get onCreate. Oh, good. And we got main because we have main by default. 
So this is actually good. 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 You mentioned this actually. So by default, we're always extending activity. We need to extend activity to get on create actually, which is an implemented method from activity. We're inheriting it. We're going to get this by default. Leave it alone. Just leave it in there. This we can change. If we go out here, we look in the resource directory. By default, we always get main, and in the main layout, here it is main. We get that. You know, if I change this. If I go out here and I refactor and I change the name and I call it uh, my name, I'm going to have the same problem I had a few minutes ago with that button, except for it's going to take a little bit longer for this to show up. But eventually I can change it. It hasn't reset yet. Long story short, it's going to take a few minutes. <laughs> but we can add, not a bad idea to create new layouts, not a good idea to keep renaming layouts because it gets confusing. So a lot of people will keep main and we'll just add new layouts to it um, when you want a new when you, when you want to use a new layout. So we'll just leave this one alone actually because this is this is going to take a while. <laughs> Depends on what you have running actually. So we know that get name here uses name getter and this is the same line of code. If you look at we've got these two lines of code here. If I go into hello world activity I'm going to see the same lines of code here. Actually, I didn't put the space in between. I've got set context view to this one. This class is using main. The other class over here is using name getter as the XML file. I can switch them around. I can create a new one. I can call it anything I want. But I'm attaching this particular uncreate with this particular class instance that gets created with this particular XML interface which is kind of a weird thing to kind of think about because you have all these classes and you can swap around the interfaces. You can actually take this guy and have him load other interfaces, set the context, keep changing the context view within the same class if you wanted to, which is kind of an interesting concept but hardly ever done because we want to use intents to do that instead. I'm going to show you intents in a few minutes. Okay, so what do we got here? We got two variables that I created, one called edit text name and the other one called, excuse me, one called name the other one called button. They're of data type. Edit type. These are object types, actually. And remember, in the last class, I tried to show you, talk to you about upcasting. <laughs> the reason why you need to know something about that. This is upcasted. This is taking it and turning it into an edit text. This is the type of object that this is. If I wanted to, I can go here and say edit. I already have edit text, but I can say edit text name and get rid of this line right here if I wanted to. But, you know, it's like any variable. If I define it up here, it's more commonly located as a data member up here, and then I can reuse it over and over again because I'm probably going to use it more than once. But if I don't want, if I wanted to, I can come down here. If I'm only going to use it one time, say edit text, which is the data type. The variable name is called name. I'm upcasting this object to an edit text object. So I can assign apples to apples. If I leave this out, it's going to tell me that it's not an edit text. It's going to tell me something. It's going to say uh, add a cast to edit text <laughs> or change the type of name to view. Because this is really a view. If I do this, this is wrong. Now I have view name. It is a view. Because view comes from, it, it's the same hierarchy of the view elements, which is why this is a view. Of the view elements we have, we have boxes and edit texts and input fields and all sorts of different GUI elements that are part of view that get and view is the superclass. So if I take it and bring it to the superclass, a button, an edit text, everything is part of view. So I can actually send on click view is anything that's a subclass of view. So on our view we have but so I can make this on click element work with um, a label. I'm going to have it attached to the button because it's the button we want to click. But any of the view items, it will actually cast. It will take the view item that was selected from the onClick, bring it to this method. This is the parameter that gets sent, which is the view component. And it's actually an argument. Excuse me, it's actually an array, but we only have one element because we only clicked on one element. You can set it up so it, it clicks on a group of elements. You can send the group to it. If you had something, you know, some functionality that you wanted to use. 
But we don't want to use this as a view. We want to use it as an edit text item. So we change it up here. Actually, I'll just put this back. It's an edit text. And an edit text, we just have to worry about it here. So now I have got, uh, oh, I have to put edit text back in here to type, to cast it back. So this is edit text. Down here, I've got a button and a button. This is a button type. So up here, I have the data type as a button element which is also part of a view. So if I let this out, I get the same behavior. So view is the superclass of all of these view elements. If you look through the Android documentation, you see the hierarchy of the components. And I have it in one of the lectures further down the road, but if I showed you that first, you'd be what? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it won't make any sense to you. But if you think of it more like a hierarchy of classes, and these are, you know, we're going down, down, lower, 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 lower. And finally, we get the elements. <laughs> and the elements are all the things, the GUI items that we're dragging and dropping and putting on the interface. And those elements are turning up into Java components because they're turning into the Java object, the R resource object that are getting compiled. So now what we have then is the explanation of the onCreate, which is saving, bringing it up, calling super onCreate. Setting this, we know what this is, right? This is our object. This is referring to ourselves. We actually pull set it. We can pull this out, actually, and it works just fine. But you're going to see it nine times. You won't get a, comp comp a compilation error at all. It's just like not saying this. In fact, I can do this. Same thing as we did with uh, the Java course. We can go this. <laughs> it's basically you're explicitly saying this object's button, this object's name. So it's more common to see here because nobody realizes, oh, this is, this is a method call. But how are we running a method call? Because the dot notation normally tells us, you know, this instance of the object, dot, but it's this. So people think this is clear. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, no, I don't like to put it in unless it's really needed. But if I was working with the same name and I was having name come through here, I'd have to go this dot name because it would be a conflict in the name, it would match. So I have to say, well, this object's name. So this refers to the current object, super refers to the super class object in the hierarchy. And it's all object oriented. OK, so on the button, we're running the set on click listener method, and we're saying on this, meaning this object, <laughs> call this object on the on click listener. And what is this object? Well, this object's got an on click listener. Here it is right here, on click. And onClick is the method that runs when the onClick listener is called. And the, this method in the implementation that we have, imp, we're saying that this particular class implements the onClick listener. In our implementation, we have the onClick method. The onClick method takes the view item that we clicked on, which is a view, but it's a button or a label or something. It can be anything, actually. You can attach an onClick listener to everything that's a view component takes it in and says, okay, now what do you want me to do with it? <laughs> okay, so this is the interesting part. This is the intent part. And intents are something that even experienced Android people have problems understanding, which is kind of weird. It's like multi-threaded applications without threads. If you don't like threads and processes, you don't like intents because it's the same thing. Think of this like a thread. An intent, so thread, new thread, is equal to thread, thre thread, and I'm going to assume, because you, some of you guys are computer science people, you know what a thread is? You know what a process is? From hopefully from a Unix background. If not, I'll give you a two-second explanation of threads and processes. A thread of execution is a running program that's abstractly converted to this process concept by an operating system. So operating systems take all the things that the user is running, treats them like processes creates threads, and they run. <laughs> People are like, what? OK, let me try this again. Thread, thread, well, OK, you know, we all know about Windows, right? You double click on an icon, and it opens up a program. When you double click on the icon, it opens up a process. The process is what we think about as a user. We call them programs. Process, program, OK, it means the same thing to a user is supposed to mean the same thing. The operating system calls it a thread. The thread is how it's being managed. So when you double click on the icon and you open up Microsoft Word, the operating system or the kernel in the operating system says, hey, we got an instance of Microsoft Word open. Let's call it number one. 
and it's only your thread number one or process number one. And then we go, we go over and we double click on PowerPoint. And now we have process number two. Everybody's got a number. And then when we touch something on the GUI, we oh, we clicked back on Microsoft Word. Then the operator says, hey, they're back on Word. Well, they're, they're now on PowerPoint again. And it keeps track of what's supposed to be running by what the users clicked on. Same thing with intents. <laughs> One intent calls another intent, calls another intent, depending upon what you click on. And the GUI items through the on-click listener is, in this particular case, is calling the intent. And the intent is just another process. So I'm going to mention intents over and over and over again for the next eight weeks. So by the time we're all done, maybe you'll have a glimpse of an idea. But if you don't even like the word intent, you don't even like the whole entire process, don't worry about it. Just take it at face value. Here we are creating a new instance of intent called my intent. This is the same thing as creating a temperature, new temperature, or any other instance of any object that we're creating. So we're saying intent's the object type. Oops, object type is intent. The name of the intent's called my intent. My intent is equal to new intent. What are we doing here? We're calling a constructor. Just the same thing as you saw in a couple hours, you know, a half hour or so ago in the Java class. <laughs> We're making a new instance of an object. This is all we do in Android, make new instances of objects. But the good thing about Android, we don't have to create the objects. Uh, if we want to create sophisticated programs, then we learn how to create objects. And we take object during programming in Java. And we figure out how to create objects so we can create objects. But in this particular case, we're making an instance of an object that already exists. It's an intent object. The object takes on two parameters, me and somebody else. Who am I? <laughs> And who do I want to call? Who do I want to create? So in this particular case, the first object though is going to be this, unless you have something else calling something else. But nine times out of 10, it's this object that wants to call another object. What does it want to call? Well, we're right now, this happens to be the get name object. And the get name object is going to call the hello world dot class. Why do they have the dot class in there? It's inconsistent. Well, yeah, that's why it's in there to tell you that it's a class. It's another object. Everything else in the Android implementation leaves out the dot class. <laughs> like R leaves it out. Um, every, you know, anywhere you see it, even in the manifest, and you never put dot class anywhere. But for intents, you got to put dot class, which is weird. Yeah. yeah, it calls this object. This intent says, call this object and replace me with this object. So if I want to switch between objects, I use an intent. And the intent, I have to tell the manifest I want the intent. And what I do is I just register the activity. And I'll go back and show you that again. But what ends up happening is we say, OK, now I'm here. OK, I want to go away. And in this process where I'm running right now, because Android programs, as I mentioned, uh, perhaps on the first night, maybe on the second night, one process per program. So you constantly have to keep swapping the process. <laughs> Only one thread of execution. So intents are the processes. So you create an intent, new intent, and it takes me, swaps it with hello world activity dot class. This is how we get the two class files to swap. And the two class files, one of them's gonna load this XML file, the other one's gonna load another XML file, works with two different interfaces. This is the classic design that every program works like. It's like the template that everybody uses. What's this next line? Well, if we want to pass information between the processes, we use the intent to pass the information. What do we want to pass? Well, we have one screen that's going to take in the user's name. We're going to take the user's name from an edit box, and we're going to pass it to the next screen and the next class. And the next class is Hello World Activity. The first class that's going to take in the name is Get Name. Activity. We, excuse me? All the yeah, theoretically. <laughs> you'll have you'll actually you'll notice some interesting delays in intents. They're supposed to be synchronized, yes. Intents fail, however. And the whole program will crash on you occasionally too. If the whole program crashes, if you have apps that crash a lot, you're using a lot of intents and they're not and the synchronization's not working correctly. Because the first intent's supposed to grab the information and this was this is the line. The put extra 
It's taking a cached information that comes from the this, and it's going to give it to that, which in that, in this particular case, is hello world activity dot class. But sometimes that information doesn't get caught fast enough, <laughs> or sometimes that information doesn't get captured at all. Maybe there's low on memory. Maybe you got too many things running, uh, and then, or maybe it doesn't get it. What's it going to get? This is the interesting thing. We created a variable called it uname or username. This is the variable name that the intent is going to send from one process to the other. It's coming from name.getText.toString. This is a method toString that converts, and this is what we're going to see actually probably next Wednesday in the other class because we have to convert stuff to strings to print things out sometimes. But anyway, long story short, getText is a method that's built into the view item and the view item name. And what's this view item name? Well, it's an edit text. So edit text that we've got in here that's going to be name on the click method. Because this does not happen in sequential order, by the way, which is something you have to get used to. The methods happen whenever the methods happen. Through the interface. Through the interface. It's event driven. So the program doesn't start from the top and go down to the bottom, <laughs> which means on create, created the name by taking the edit text from find view by ID, which was the ID that was in the r.resource file that was called edit text one, which is in the name getter.xml file from up here that we created because we set the context view to name getter. It took that and now we're taking name up here when the user clicked on on click clicked on the view item, we got the view item, and we said, okay, what's the view item? Oh, it's this one. Okay, so, okay, this is the right one. We put the listener on because the listener is down here on the button. It was the button. If it's not the button, it's not going to work. So, because we put the listener on the button. It takes and says name dot get text dot two. So we'll convert it to a string because uname is a string. As we, we told it it was a string. It's actually, believe it or not, this is kind of, you can, you can define uname outside of here, but it makes no sense because you're never going to use it in here. By the time this intent, it gets put into the intent to be passed along the route to the new process that's going to start, it's never going to be used, which is why we don't have to define uname out here, which is kind of interesting. We just take it as a, it, it's automatically cast to a string, and we can, it's automatically string value. So if you try to send something else, if I take this two string off of here, I said, just give me the text. Ooh, it's not going to come up with an error message. <laughs> it should come up with an error message. Well, it's not going to work because it's going to come out as garbage. It's not going to come out as text. So this is, this is, uh, let's say, uh, what was it? Here, actually, let me just do this. Let me put it back. And do typing. Do typing. Ah, there we go. Put the two string back. That's interesting. This is not going to work. If you take out the two string, it's not going to work because it's not going to come in as string. It's going to come in as ASCII code or whatever, characters, character sets instead of a string because that's supposed to be a string type. <laughs> so that's interesting. Maybe if, it, have, if I had saved it, maybe it would have given me an error message eventually when I figured it out. I don't know. It's not going to pass anything but a string. Only strings get passed. Ah, let me, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. It will pass anything you want it to pass, which is, you know, probably explains why this works. This comes in as a string, then I convert it. So I convert it to two integer to float to double. We'll, talk, we'll see conversion in the Java class soon. But uh, you can take that, you can send a, an integer, a float, you actually can send an IP address. You can send anything you want. In fact, it's common to send like addresses and what? information what? troubleshooting what? Yeah. whole if you actually can send an entire array or you can send an object this way as well yeah you can send anything you want you have to make sure you convert it to the right data type for what you're going to do we're going to use this you name as a string which is why I want to send it as a string in this particular case okay so this dot start activity my intent takes the same thing that we did up here with on create and destroys the current activity, but this is actually kind of sloppy because we didn't destroy it. We haven't garbage collected it, but let's not worry about that right now. We have automatic garbage collection going on. 
But we could destroy it. But instead what we're doing is we're going to start, we're going to take this and replace it with a new start activity, my intent. My intent is this class up here. This is the key. This is what starts the new class objects to run instead of the other one by starting the activity. Starting activity takes and comes over here. My intent, well, what's my intent? My intent is hello world activity.class. And on my intent, I've put the extra, I put this piece of information. So now it goes over here to hello world activity. Takes the information in. And I say, how does the information come in? <laughs> we have this bundle object. This is the weird part. It makes absolutely no sense or logic or anything. But the bundle is what is, I almost think of it more like a cache. Why do they even call it like cache or like, um, it's a, really a hash set. Because it's it's uname with whatever is assigned to uname. I can set more than one piece of information as well. I can set a ton of information. It comes through the bundle. So we can get extras. So we put extras and then we get extras, which is how we're passing the information back and forth. So when hello world activity runs, we don't have any listeners or anything on here. We're just extending from activity. And uh, in here we have the onCreate method. The onCreate method it looks just like the other onCreate. It's got the set context view to the layout main. But this is the interesting line of code right here that doesn't exist in the other one. It's the bundle. And the bundle is coming from OS, so it's operating system bundle, which is coming from the intent, which is the built-in processing feature from the base OS, which changes an implementation with different... This is why you need to make sure you have the right Android version, the right emulator, because intents don't work on, on the same on all emulators or on all Android just because it's part of the operating system. It's implemented as a feature of the process synchronization and process working. But that you don't really need to know anything about. So we create a new object called my, in my input. And my input is coming from, is of type bundle and bundles coming from my intent. So this dot get intent because we sent the intent. <laughs> get intent dot get extras which is the opposite of put extras into my intent. So, you get the process. so think of it like a pipe. One end sticks it through the pipe, the other end connects to the pipe, opens it up and grabs it out, which is actually how piped information works with process synchronizations in Linux or Unix. So it's a piped concept. But we don't use pipe symbols, instead we use intents and bundles and all the other object different types. Wording. Different wording, same concept. That's why I say if you're familiar with processes, this is this is inter-process communication using pipes, <laughs> essentially. All right, so what do we got here? Well, now we have a text view T. That's going to be equal to a text view this. What is this? This is just nothing more than creating an instance of an object. Excuse me, creating an instance of an object reference without assigning it to anything. This was put in here only because, uh, well, it's a different way of doing it. It's the same code as before, but we did it in two different steps. If you saw, if you were here for the Java course when I went to um, temperature or something or other, and then I took something or other and I said equals to new temperature or something or other, this is the equivalent. You don't have to do it this way. I could say text view. I could do it the same way and put here text view t is equal to new text view, um, and do it that do it the other way if I want. But it's just another way of creating the variable, just to show you a few different options. If you don't like that, use the other technique. What are we going to do here? We're going to, well, where did uname come from? Well, uname came in automatically from get extras, the method on the get intent from this, because this has the intent. Can, can you put an XVT outside of this uh, method? Just like the button in the. Oh, yeah. Text? Yeah, it could be put up here, but we're only going to use it inside the onCreate. There's nothing else the, for the program. It's kind of a simple little program. It can be put out here just like the um, just like the button and the edit text. Same concept. It's just put in here because it's the only place we're using it really. Um, so now we have text view t is equal to new text view this. Uh, t is equal to text view fine. Same code as before. Same syntax. It's just done in two separate lines instead of one. Just to show you variety. But it's identical if you're concerned. It's identical to these statements here and the statement up here <laughs> combined together. But I have to show you some variety. And then this is a different line of code, however. So this, this is creating the item itself, T. T 
is the name of the text view. T.setText is a way of programmatically setting the text that appears in the XML interface. So it's set text, get text, set text, or the equivalent to uh, the input, the output from the text field. You know, if you think of it that way. So we're going to put out there hello, and then it's going to be um, here. I'll actually, you know, actually, no, it doesn't really matter. Don't I can change it. The in, my input, which is my input up here, dot get string. This is this is what I was trying to tell you before. We're going to. I didn't actually have to send it as a string, but if I send it as a string and I get it as a string, I'm going to get more reliable results. I could send an integer and get a string, but this uname is supposed to be a string for this purpose, so I'm going to get the string. If I got integer, got float, got double, it'd get me the different formats. And if I sent it as a float, sent it as an integer, it would come in through as an integer, I'd get it as an integer. Huh? You just get less if there's more. Yep, you can't cast it. Most people would send it as a bigger object and then shrink it if they need to shrink it. Or take it as an integer and then convert it to a string when you get it here by using a two string on an integer. And you're going to convert it. But basically, for this particular case, we're setting the text and we need to set the text as a string in order for it to appear. So it's going to say hello and then this is concatenation. The same thing we saw in the Java class. And then this is essentially the code that's going to take plus this item here, and this item here is our, um, oops, it's both of those two because we have opening and closing brackets for that one, our get string, the new name that we came through. We can call it anything we want. Again, we didn't actually give it a name in here. We're not going to use it. So it's just for the purposes of the intent. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to define the variable, and you know you don't have to declare it, initialize it, assign a value to it, and then send it to the intent. You can just do it all in one. It's kind of a sloppy way of doing it, but and if you're not going to use it, you don't have to use it. Some people actually use uname, like you'll use it somewhere in the program, and then you can reuse it for the intent. So there's just no restriction. The scope is global for the entire object. So it just comes. It's just like a regular old data member. So so what happens when we do this? Let's see what happens uh, when we run the program all this, you're like, oh, is it going to run? And actually, for those people who are cheating, I shouldn't say it's cheating, for those people who need some a little extra help with assignment number one, you're looking at all of the codes, so pause the video, write it all down. <laughs> this is the, uh, what you're looking at right now is the hello world activity, which is this one here. The other class that you're creating is this one here. This one here is called uh, get name, get name. It's going to look like that. Obviously, your project is going to be different. Your, uh, perhaps your package name might be different. Who knows? But this is the code for that. You can follow through the instructions on the readme and probably create the GUI just fine. But your GUI is going to look like that. <laughs> this is the name getter. Excuse me, this is main. Main is just showing a title. It's just showing a string. It has one text view. And these are the text view elements, actually, um, that you're looking at. And then uh, name getter over here. This is a little bit more, you know, because it's got a text view. It's got a edit text. You know. I didn't explain request focus, which is kind of interesting. Request focus um, is basically a single tag on its own, and it's basically telling you in the GUI to put the cursor here. So it's right underneath the edit text. So that I didn't explain, which is probably a good thing why I came here. So you can see actually in this GUI example here, you can see the cursor actually because of that request focus. If I took the request focus out, the user would actually have to click in the field in order for the thing. Now I'm going to get the request focus. So you're going to see this when you put web views and stuff down, and you have multi-layered hierarchies, which we're going to get to. And then you're going to want, well, I want this to be in focus first. I want that to be in focus first. And then you can specify you know, by default what's going to be hit. Tab index or anything like that? Nope. No tab index. However, you, can, you get the keyboard automatically. Uh, we'll see the keyboard actually come up. Um, so there's nothing. Good point. Good point. We didn't mention this is the one good thing. Well, I shouldn't say one good thing. Yeah. One of the better things about Android versus iPhone, we can request the keyboard to come up. If we don't request, it comes up automatically. Anyway, we don't have to request it. And we'll get the keyboard because we need to be able to type it in somehow. So I'm not going to save any of this stuff. 
But what I want to do is run it so you can see what's going on um, in terms of the interface. So without further delay, let me run it. I have this running in VirtualBox, by the way, so your interface might look a little different. And I made VirtualBox really big so you can see it. I made the font big. Yeah, it's a tablet, actually. Here it is. It's in the back. It's kind of big. If I start typing, my keyboard should come up. Whoops, if I click in here, type your name. Whoops, my keyboard does not come up. And this might be a scenario with this particular emulator. The keyboard should come up. So why the keyboard's not coming up? I don't know. But theoretically, in other emulators, it does come up. So when you were typing in, there's only one way of getting it. So, so I've uh, typed in my name. Now, here's the, here's the, so when I press this, this is the on-click method is going to perform because the on-click listener is attached to this button. When I click the button, it automatically, seamlessly loaded, unloaded the previous class, loaded the new class through the intent, sent the word Barbara that was in that edit text in the bundle called uname. We took the uname and we said hello, you know, plus get get that information from the intent and it printed it out on the screen. So if I were to well, it's gonna be the same. I was gonna say if I were to switch task switch and come back to it, it would take the state that it was currently at, so Barbara would still be in there, actually, if I were to I don't know how to swap with this emulator. In fact, I don't think this emulator is going to support it. But uh, theoretically, if I had this program running and I went, I can't get the menu, actually. Um, if I had a button there, actually, I can. Wait a minute. I can go. This program is running. And uh, if I go home and I go back to run the program again, and you, you can actually, where's my program? It's called, it's not called IT Mobile. It's called project something AP something or maybe it's called project one what did I call the sucker well if I loaded it again it would load another instance of oh, hello world I think it might be oh, no, I thought I changed the icon this hello world up oh, there it is what happened was it, I was demonstrating the on save state so if I take that line out and I do the same thing and I come back here so the program is actually still it's paused. So when the life cycle comes back through and says, well, what's going on with this program? It's going to bring back the state that it was previously saved at instead of loading it fresh. If I take that line of code out and I go back and I load it again, I thought I changed the uh, icon though, but I still have it here. Maybe I have a different version. You can see my name is still in there. Cause, oh, here's the, here's the keyboard. So <laughs> I don't think you saved it when you edit the XML. Oh, maybe I didn't save it. I could have clicked out of it without saving it. I probably didn't. You're probably right. I, I changed it, but I didn't save it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now the keyboard worked. But it, I think it's a, more of an emulator issue. You don't actually have to tell the keyboard to come up. It comes up for you automatically. It's part of the phone functionality. So if I took that line out, as we were talking about before, and then this is the line I'm talking about on the uh, this one here. If I take out the saved instance state, the word Barbara would not be appearing there. In fact, the whole program would actually come back fresh on a fresh start. So this is basically giving me the last state that the uh, instance was running. In fact, it's not even loading a new one. This super uncreate is actually loading the same one that was on before from the life cycle. So the object life cycle is a bit different. So. Okay, so how are we doing on time? We doing good? We got more? We want more? You want less? No, you're shaking your head no. <laughs> That's what we needed to cover tonight to be on schedule. Uh, that is actually assignment number one. Uh, there's a couple more things I want to show you, though, before I, I end. I'll end soon. I'll end soon, but I want to, because we don't have Monday. We don't have class on Monday, so I want to make sure I get us slightly ahead of schedule, just in case. So the next assignment requires... Uh, something else from you and you're gonna go huh? how come I have to do that you have to create another hello world assignment <coughs> however it's extremely easy 
But I want to give this to you just in case you're going to spend some time between now and next Wednesday working on stuff, which is not a bad idea because we only have eight weeks in this class. So now that you're armed and dangerous with this first program, you can go online, look at the video, and copy the code and get it all done. You're going to be looking at assignment number two next. Assignment number two is hello testing and hello localization. And uh, what I want to point out here is if you click on this link here, it's going to take you to the developer site. If it doesn't, here I can copy. Hold on one second. Let me take you to the developer site. It takes you to the developer site. You're actually going to be running, and this is why I say there's no excuses for this one. I'm not going to go through this one in as much detail as I went through the first one because it's all the same stuff over again. But what you're going to do here is you're going to run through a tutorial. And the tutorial requires that you complete a hello world. It'll take you five minutes at this point to, to create that first hello world. It's no big deal. And the whole, for, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see that this is the hello world. And we have hello views and hello. This is the one you're doing. The next assignment is actually the notepad tutorial. The reason why I'm having you do this is because it does a much better job going through and it gives you a bunch of reading to do. And it gets you to get out to the site. The site's very important, actually, because you know, you want to know what's available, and you want to know you want to you want to know this stuff. This is like bare minimum. So, if you follow the assignment instructions correctly, you have to complete the hello testing tutorial. That's for this assignment. In order to do that, you need to complete the simple hello world app. That's at this location, which is it'll take you five minutes to do it. Do not complete the activity testing unless you want to. You can actually do more than it's requiring, or you can do less. It's your choice. But you're going to do the localization as well, which is going to show you a little bit about the localization features. And uh, I'm going to be talking about localization in the next lecture, actually next week. Um, so not a bad thing. You, you are armed and dangerous. If you can do that first hello world activity, which is a lot more complicated than their, their hello world activity, you're in good shape. Another thing I sort of wanted to point out to you as well before I leave you for a long weekend is how to get to the samples if I haven't shown you this already, uh, which not a bad thing because what you're doing is working through tutorials that will give you end products that are part of the samples, but they're not these identical samples. So let me, let me show you vis visually what I'm talking about. If I close this project, I'm just going to close this stuff here. I don't know what I did wrong with that one. Anyway, probably didn't save it. If I go File, New, Android Project, and I click on the item here, it says, you cannot do this for the assignment. Some students try to do this, and they end up, this is why I'm showing it to you. These are different ones. They're not the tutorials. <laughs> there is a notepad in here, but it's not the same notepad. So if I go Create Project from Existing Source, and I call this one, uh, actually, I don't even have to put a name in here, but I can say uh, Notepad. Let's just call it Notepad, or Notes. Let's call it Notes. Why is it giving me a problem? Choose a valid Android code directory. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. Not existing source. Existing samples is the one. They switched it on me. So you want the existing samples option, which is now the second one instead of the first one. If I go next, I'm going to select the API version that I want the existing sample for, which is going to be 2.33 in my case, because that's the emulator that I'm using. Next, this is what I'm talking about. These are the code samples that are on the Android developer site. I showed this to you once before, but now that you're more, you know, hopefully adventurous, and now that you're going to start looking at the stuff more in detail, Notepad is going to be very similar to the tutorial that you're building in the third assignment. So it merits a little peeky, you know, peek at it a little bit. So click on finish. What you get over here on the left-hand side of the screen here is uh, notes, which is the project I created. And if I go into notes, I can look at the source code, and it's from examples. This is how I'm going to know, actually, because the folder file format's different. The deliverable's different. This is not the same program. However, I can run it, and I can see what the program does. And I've essentially built a project at this point. And now let me zoom out so I can see. Did I shut my emulator? I think I may have shut the emulator. Oh, don't want that emulator. 
Uh, I, sh I closed my emulator. But if you run the program, and run this, it'll bring it up in your emulator, you can go through, and I highly encourage you to start looking at it. Because what you're going to see is the same thing I just went kind of through, but you're going to see different components. And in the, if you learn by example, in my opinion, the best way is going through those samples. Because everything possibly imaginable is in those samples. And you have access to all the code. You don't have to go out there to the internet and do a search. And you don't have to download stuff and import it in. Um, if you weren't doing it this way, you'd have to use the project import features. If you go over here and say import, a lot harder to import existing projects from source samples and things. Because if you double click on it, it's not going to open it up correctly. <laughs> You have to import in and then save it and set your configuration. And then you have it work with your emulator and then you're going to discover, oh, I don't have that emulator. Or I don't have that API level. So the uh, so code samples are API to API. So it depends on which API you're using as to which samples you're going to load in. But at this point in your Android experience, you should be able to look at the samples and at least run them and see what they're doing. And then it's not a bad idea because a lot of them are very advanced. And it's like um, gives you baby steps to a you know better direction. The other thing I wanted to show you, which I still have time for, is I brought in my device, by the way. And my device, um, and I highly recommend, not necessarily a requirement for this class, but eventually if you want to do some serious testing, not a bad way of seeing it actually work on the device. But a lot of people go, how do I get it to the device? Well, if I click on my device, you can't see it, but it says USB connected. I have it connected to my computer via a USB cable. If I click on connect storage, and your device might actually have a separate, maybe a slightly different form. I might connect, connect automatically, might not. This is a Galaxy Tab. You see on my screen here, I've got, let me open this up, make it a little bit bigger. Looks like a USB disk. <laughs> it is a, it's a flash disk. And in this no name actually in here. No name actually has some APK files in here. Actually, this is from another project. So if I go to Eclipse, and this is the easiest way of doing it, actually. If I loaded as an example here, let's go back to uh, AP assignment number one that I closed. If I go and I click on the bin directory, I see this file here, AP, whoops, AP assignment one. It's the same name as my file, as my project name. It has an APK extension on it. And the biggest thing is how do we get it to the device? Not so hard. Just drag it over and drop it on the device. <laughs> no. It's easy. Yeah, no, no iPhone, no a Apple Store, no license, no certificate, nothing. Drop it on a device, eject the device. So you just sit here and go, okay, let's say eject the device. Oops. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see this part on the computer. But if I come back, I get this thing on the top. This is preparing SD card, scanning new media. I can actually thumb down on it, and I can install it from my notification menu if you have it set up correctly. Or I can use a file manager on here to go to the SD card. Just press on the icon, and it'll run through the install for you. And it will put the app automatically on your device. It's very easy. Very easy to do. In fact, here, I have this. It's called Linda Manager. In fact, if you have an Android device and you want to download this, on your device, go to... It's a file manager, open source. Oh, this is cool. A Linda... Uh, what's it called? Linda Manager. Here it is here. This is the icon for it right here, actually. It's from the Google Play. If you've got a device, install Linda Manager. It's free. It's just like a file explorer. So you click on Linda Manager, you can't really see it, but if I scroll down to the bottom, actually, if I scroll in the middle and say I say SD card, I click on the SD card, scroll down to the bottom. Here's that app right here, actually. It says AP assignment number one. Click on it. You can't see this, but if you want to come up after class, you can look at it. Install open. There's my app. <laughs> so it's as easy as that. However, it requires that you have a device. So the devices are kind of cheap, actually. Interesting thing with devices, though, is you want to get one that's going to be sort of compatible with what you're building for. So not necessarily a 4.0 
ice cream version, you know, probably, this is a gingerbread or something, this is lower. Each one of the devices has an API level on it, the API levels are the SDKs that you're installing, the emulators. It's the same as the emulator, except for this is real. You can carry this around with you. The emulator, you can't. Also, the reason why you want a device eventually is because this supports Bluetooth, the internet, USB, uh, other programs, you can read and write files, you can do all sorts of stuff on here that you can't do on the emulators. So, I mean, you can make the emulator work, but in some cases, this is just easier. So, all right, I'll leave you with that. We are done for today. <laughs> so, enjoy your uh, day off on Monday. We don't have we don't have class on Monday; it's a holiday. But I'll see you Wednesday. And if you have problems getting a device, or if you want to see this one, I'll leave. I'll stick around. You can play with this if you want. So.